everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Maddie Lullaby and today I'm bringing you guys a two-part series on how to grow up a pet Instagram account. So this first video is part one. Part one is going to be all about using Instagram to your advantage and then the second video is going to be all about how to take good photos of your pets for Instagram and that particular video will be more about an easy introduction into manual photography and maybe some tips to like get the best out of your pet photos and I'm going to be giving you guys five tips. So, um, I mean, I could talk about Instagram all day, I feel like, but I've narrowed it down to five. Now, a little bit of backstory. I've written down my progress with Mia's account on my phone, and I'm just going to tell you guys some facts about it right now. Um, I'm looking down because I'm looking at my phone. I started taking her account seriously on the 1st of December 2017, so only three months ago now. And we started out with 350 followers and I hadn't been posting very regularly, maybe once a week. I didn't have much on there. I didn't really know what I was doing. Basically, I was trying to work out how best to go about it, but I hadn't really hit my stride yet. <laughs> on the 1st of December, I'm like, okay, I'm taking it seriously. And I started posting three times a day. And I've been posting three times a day for since then. So about three months now. And I currently have 3,201 followers. So, I mean, we've grown heaps, so I feel like I'm onto something. I feel like I do know what I'm doing a little bit. I thought it would be fun today to like share my tips with you guys, help you guys build up your accounts too if you want to, because I just sort of worked all this stuff out on my own and I feel like I'm a sharing person, so I'm just gonna share it all with you guys today. All right, so I have five tips to share with you guys, and number one is hashtags. Now I'm gonna move over so that I can show you guys my phone recording, and I can show you guys exactly what I mean as I go. So this is Mia's account. A really good way to find out what are the most popular hashtags to use is to do this. You click on your little search bar down here, and then you go up the top and search, and then it brings you up these four tabs, which say top people, tags and places. So you're going to click on tags and then you're going to search really general tags. My pet account is obviously my dog Mia and she's a corgi. So if you search up corgi, it comes up with all the hashtags that people use that have the word corgi in it and you can see exactly how many people have used the tag, how popular it is sort of thing. Um, so Corgis of Instagram is really popular. Corgi Puppy is also really popular. Yeah, just scroll through these and you can see all the really popular tags. So that's one good way to find out what hashtags are really good to use. Um, another thing to do is once you've found all the like good hashtags that you want to use, compile a list and keep them in a notes page in your phone. So I have a notes page full of hashtags. I have different themes. I have these ones at the front, which are like Mia standard tags. These are like the things you would search for, I feel like, if you were trying to find Mia specifically. This first paragraph is all related to Melbourne, Australia. Then I got some photography tags, some popular tags, dog tags specifically, puppy tags specifically, corgi tags specifically and then some other random ones too. It's good to like break them up and cycle through tags. I think Instagram doesn't like it if you always use the same tags. So generally I've been finding I use my corgi paragraph of tags. <laughs> um, and then in the next image, I'll generally use my puppy paragraph of tags. Something to note is that you can only use 30 hashtags in a post. If you go over that, your post automatically fails. Always copy paste your caption and all your tags and stuff before you post an image, just in case they fail your post and then you can't get those words back. So yeah, I think like those are some good tips for you guys. Um, it took me a while to work out hashtags, but I think I have a formula down and I think uh, you won't be disappointed if you use a similar formula to me. My next tip is tagging people. So tagging feature accounts. Now, if you look at the top of my notes page here, I actually have a whole bunch of Coggy feature accounts and I've broken them up into how many different followers these pages have. So for instance, I always tag this little top paragraph of tags. They have 100K followers, so if they ever pick one of my photos then heaps of their followers are going to see my photo and hopefully go over and follow my page. It's also good to do smaller accounts because you're more likely to get chosen and then that can inspire some of the big accounts to pick that image too. But how do you find these feature accounts you may ask me and I'm going to show you. So go back into your Instagram in the search page, look for something specific. For instance, if you're a dog account again and your breed is Corgi like mine, just type in Corgi. Search for it in the people tab. One of the biggest ones that you'll probably find for any breed is 
what your breed is of Instagram. So Corgis of Instagram, I think is one of the biggest Corgi feature accounts. So click on them and then click on this little drop down menu. It gives you suggestions of similar pages. Click onto this first one here. And then once you find these accounts, you need to make sure they're legit. And what I mean by legit is that they credit the people that they take the photos from. So if we click into this photo here, via Ken the Corgi, so they do credit. Um, it's important to click in a couple of posts, make sure that they don't just feature for one of them. They just took a photo from a feature account as well. Um, so yeah, I probably wouldn't actually follow this account because of that. Thanks to the photographer. I hate when they do that. Don't follow any accounts that say, thanks to the photographer, can you please tag them below if you know them. They should be finding and crediting people's work that they find. They shouldn't just rip people off. So no, um, don't go for this account if, if you were going to. <laughs> What's another tip? With similar accounts, like you can go and find like, for instance, me as a Corgi account. So if I click on Apollo's Corgi Life, if I go into Apollo's Corgi Life's Instagram, click on one of his photos and then tap um, his photo, it shows me all the people that he tagged. So that's another good way to work out who you should be tagging by going onto popular accounts already and seeing the accounts that they tag. He's tagged Dogs of Instagram, which is a really good account if you're a dog account. Um, definitely always tag them. They have heaps of followers, as you can see. What you can also do is you can click on people who have tagged them and you can go and have a little look into it. As you can see up there, I just clicked into this random image, I tapped on the photo and then it came up with all the tagged accounts that they've tagged. So the clicking on similar accounts and seeing who they tag is a really good way to find people to tag, but you can also do that for their hashtags. So you can click into popular account posts and see what kinds of hashtags they use as well if you need hashtag inspiration. What else I can tell you about the tagging people is that you can only tag 20 accounts in one post. If you do multi-photo post and you try and tag a whole bunch of people I find that it generally fails post and it doesn't work I generally try and tag about five to ten people and I try and space it out amongst my multi post photos so that 20 tags aren't on the first photo and then none of the other pictures are tagged with anything I don't really fully understand why the multi post thing doesn't work but that's something to be aware of it's so annoying when Instagram fails your post for like random reasons that you can't work out <laughs> step three is a less technical step and that is captions my tips for your captions are to basically take on the persona of your pet I reckon Mia's like kind of a spoiled brat, a little bit into herself, a little bit food obsessed kind of thing and I try and have that in my captions and I also try and make my captions funny. My top two tips for captions is to speak in the voice of your pet, sort of make your followers feel like your dog's really just going through their day and you know funny things are happening and they're saying funny things. Try and make as many posts as you can funny because I generally find that the funnier the caption the more response I get. So for instance this one the sunlight got caught in my lady beard that's gotten a lot of likes <laughs> this one's funny too I think just because of the face also it's a multi post look I can I can show you what I mean like I've just tagged one account on each photo and they're the top corgi accounts that have the most followers but yeah so so this caption says okay so I tried to eat the flowers and I made a sour lemon face scroll across to see more this one's cute too wow this one has a lot of likes <laughs> I'm still practicing for the dog walk so like catwalk, dog walk sort of thing. I mean, this isn't my best work, everyone, but oh, this one's good. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this isn't my best work, but this one's good. This one says, waiting for the corgi bat signal so I can save the day with my cute looks. Tip number four is to post regularly. So as I said at the start of this video, I took me as account seriously on the 1st of December and I started posting three times three times a day it's really paid off so if you guys have like some spare time like a spare month or something and you know that you can really like hunker down build up following and then cut back down to like once a day or uh, once every second day then yeah like go for it you don't have to post three times a day I just wanted to get the ball rolling I also space out my three times a day posts. like I don't just post one after the other after the other um, Instagram doesn't like when you do that. You get more traction and more likes and stuff if you space it out. My tip number five is 
theme. Come up with a theme for your account. Um, obviously, if you have a pet account, that's pretty easy because you know that your pet is going to be the main star in basically every photo. So we already have a theme of corgis. But what I like to do, actually, which I think is a really good tip, is if you can see this, guys, I go dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. And I think that looks really attractive to the eye. It looks like you have a theme, but you don't really. Like, I have a lot of different color palettes and things going on in my theme. I have a lot of greens. I have a lot of yellows. Um, I have some white photos, I have some pink going on in there, sometimes I have some blue. You can also be like really stylistic, like for instance, Boko Corgi. Um, their theme is very white and black and like monochrome and it looks really effective. They also have a white and dark theme going on actually, I just noticed. And yeah, so you can definitely do that. You can definitely have like a color theme or a monochrome theme, or you can be more like me where you just want the mood and the moment. Like I'm looking for those sort of moments more than I'm looking for a specific style and color theme because honestly, it seems really kind of stressful to maintain. And then you have all these like beautiful photos of your corgi or your pet that you love that you can't post because it doesn't match with your theme. Like I think that's so sad if you have other beautiful shots that you want to share so yeah I think sort of a light dark light dark thing sort of contrasts and breaks up your theme enough and still looks good so those are my five tips but I want to add in one extra bonus tip for you guys and that is to always 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 put your pets Instagram at tag in the photo like hidden somewhere in the photo or really obvious in the photo but make sure that it's nowhere you can crop out because sometimes these feature accounts or wannabe feature accounts it's more the wannabe feature accounts take your photo and then they crop out your little tag and they don't give you credit that's just so rude in my opinion yes they're photos of your dog but they're also if you're a photographer or someone who's kind of creative like you know they're your intellectual property if you have a look at me as right now you can't really see where I put in her tag, which is really good. Um, I prefer that look. I know a lot of people think that it looks kind of tacky, so I've tried to hide it in each photo. And I think when it's not so offensive as well, people don't want to crop it out as much either. So you don't want people stealing your photos. And if they do, you at least want the people that see that photo to be able to find you if they actually like your content. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, guys, so those were my five tips. One extra bonus tip just because I like like you. <laughs> also please comment below guys and let us know of your Instagram tips. Um, it might really help some other people out. It would be cool to get like a little community thing going in the comments where we're all providing tips and tricks for each other. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope that it helps you guys build up your social media accounts. Um, good luck. Don't forget to check out part two which will go up next week. So make sure you don't miss out on that video either. Make sure you turn on my post notifications so you get notified of when the next video goes up. Subscribe down below if you haven't already as well and liking this video would really help me out. I'll see you guys next week.